Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Serena and in today's video we're going to be sewing up a blouse and skirt pattern. I'm really excited to share this with you guys. I actually picked up this pattern um, after shooting the very last video where I was wearing the 1960s suit, the brocade suit. We went shopping in that outfit and then I came across some vintage patterns and I really fell in love with this pattern so I picked it up and I also picked up two other I think a pattern alteration book it was a vintage pattern alterations book and a vintage suit tailoring book which I'd love to share with you guys I think I'm gonna do like a very teeny tiny um haul it just features a couple things that I found at that vintage shop as well as marketplace yeah so I'm really excited to share that with you guys thank you so much for liking and sharing the last video it was doing so well and I really appreciate it when you leave me little comments and like the video it really does help uh, grow my channel um thank you so much and special shout out to closet historian who also shared that video and it did really well thank you to her and her followers if you are new from her welcome it's so nice to have you if you'd like to follow me in real time you can follow me at serena underscore on instagram um, if you'd like to support this channel further you can leave me a virtual tip on ko-fi the link will be in the description below and without further ado let's get into the pattern and the fabric for today's pattern we will be using simplicity 3155 it's a junior size 11 bust 31 and a half it is a two view pattern it has a simple skirt blouse with a matching bow belt and the belt pattern is included and then it also comes with the matching jacket if you wanted to turn this into a suit the pattern instructions were actually written in both 1958 and 1959 leading me to believe that it may have been reprinted in 1959 or like still being manufactured in 1959 because there's two pages of instructions and they have different dates on each of them. The description is dress has top with round neckline and kimono sleeves, which is an outdated term for those sleeves. I like to use attached leaves, shaped pemplum and top stitching detail. Slim skirt has a side zipper closing and back kick pleat. Self fabric belt with a bow is worn. Line jacket has notched collar, set in sleeves, button front closing and a welt trim. Um, these are all of the pattern pieces and the sizes and yardage and finished body measurements and such so yeah let's get into the fabric for today's fabric we're going to go with this 100 percent cotton screen printed fabric it's screen printed to look like a pale blue tweed you'll get a more color accurate um idea of what it looks like for later on in the video because the lighting is a little bit off right now so we're gonna be working with this. I did show this in my fall fabric haul and I'll leave a card for that video above it if you like to see all of the fabric that I purchased in that haul. So welcome to my channel where I just try stuff. I am marking the soft pleats into this crinoline and yes, crinoline is an actual material that you can buy. I can see my markings through here. I once made a vintage pattern that had you put uh, interfacing just at the front hip section um, to help shape it, but I used interfacing for this task and it didn't turn out the way that I think it was supposed to. So I'm trying to do something a little heavier. This is gonna be a partially lined um, skirt. So I'm going to see how the crinoline works. I'm not worried about the rough material because I'll be putting um, like a satin lining or some sort of lining, whatever I can find in my scrap bin to protect me. So right now I'm just pinning to see how this ends up looking. I might put in well, I know for a fact that I'm going to put in some extra padding at the hips because this pattern does have like a distinct little hip situation and I am just experimenting. So this could end up being a flop. Changes might be made by the time I show this off to you. And I'm actually going to base this in before I actually sew it in. I just kind of want to see what this ends up looking like on my dress form before I move further. And yeah, so if you're wondering what the heck is she doing, 
I am just experimenting because obviously they had padding techniques, they had shaping techniques, they had all of the things that um, I guess has been lost in today's sewing culture for the most part. We definitely depend on our actual body shapes to create shape in our garments. And your girl is not interested in that in one bit. Like, I like the way that I look in general and I have no desire to change the way that I look permanently for fashion and yeah <laughs> I like playing with shapes as you saw last week I went with a very straight silhouette and I loved it and I couldn't do that if I well I guess I technically could but like I don't know I'm changing silhouettes from day to day so I feel like if it's built into my clothing it'll make life a lot easier so yeah so now I'm gonna just take this over to my dress form see how it's like just protruding oh I just love it so much but yeah, I'm gonna go put it on my dress form. I definitely think there's gonna need some sort of padding in here somewhere. So that way, because otherwise this wouldn't even touch my body probably, but we'll see. So I don't know if you can tell, but it definitely has that like new look-esque vibe to it, which the pemplum is going to sit perfectly on top of. Um, I think it looks kind of crazy on the dress form but like definitely has that gapping and then it made me think that maybe I will not attach the padding underneath this but instead I'm going to um, make my padding separate so that way I can just tie it underneath so that way the skirt has something to really rest on because I don't want too much bulk at the waist if I attach it up here or the other option, or I don't want it to get in the way of the zipper, but another option that I think I have with this is to like baste it beneath. I'll pop in a picture so you can really see how the peplum kinds of sits. And I definitely have to stiffen it up here somewhere in order to get that shelf and that curvy look because this is just a simple cotton. And um, one of my goals this year is to really learn to play with shape and building a foundation so that way my suits have the look my suits my outfits my dresses whatever has the looks that i want it to have i think this is the creative and the fun part of working with the patterns i think it's one thing to sew the pattern and you get a really good construction and result and then i think taking it the next level and really putting the creative aspect to it is exactly what I plan on doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and baste this crinoline on and then move forward from here. So along with the sewing goals, I do have some personal goals and that is to prioritize rest. I tend to get caught up in what I'm doing and it's really hard to put down my projects because I get caught up, I lose track of time and then I end up sewing well into the morning and in one case that helps my content because then my background's always quiet, my kids are asleep, and I can really focus on editing and doing voiceover work, but then I'm exhausted when I have to wake up just a few hours later to start my day. So I have been going to bed earlier, so that means parts of my audio will be done when they're awake. But instead of trying to film and record everything at night, I figured the more technical and detailed portions of the voiceover will be done at night. And other parts, I will try to do it when they're the quietest during the day. So I made a little half lining, I guess you can say, or partial lining to cover the crinoline. And that is this white scrap taffeta that I'm doing now. I am hemming that piece before I baste it onto the skirt along with the crinoline that's already attached. Once I'm done prepping and sewing the front section of the skirt that was done on the fold, I start marking the back of the skirt. So all of the darts on the back and then also marking the vent at the back of the skirt. Once I'm done at the cutting table, I take the skirt to the sewing machine and I sew up all of the darts and I work on the center back, which I do use a French seam for. Once I was done with the back of the skirt, I combined it with the front, making French seams at the side seam. At this point, the crinoline was still attached to the front of the skirt. Further down the line, I decided to remove the crinoline 
because while it was giving me the desired effect on the dress form, the fabric is so thin that you could see the line of demarcation where the crinoline stopped and the free flowing skirt started. And I didn't like that crease. And the leaving the skirt like that would have served for photos only, and it would not have been very practical for day-to-day -day wear. Now it's time for the blouse. And the blouse is just as simple as the skirt is. This was a very quick and easy project to do. I am so impressed with this piece. The blouse is made up in three pieces, not including all of the facings. The sleeves are attached, so you don't have to ease in a sleeve. It buttons up the back and has a hook and eye at the waist, so you don't need another zipper. And the peplum is interface and lined. I used about a medium weight interfacing for the peplum, plus the way that the peplum is designed, it's almost like a beehive type waist look to it, and it lends itself well to the weight of the interfacing and the structure of the overall garment. The shape is drafted into the peplum instead of the peplum relying on the wearer's hips to hold it up or give it shape. I was afraid that the peplum would collapse on itself and that's why I wanted to make sure that the skirt itself had structure for it to sit on. But if you use a heavier weight fabric or a heavier weight interfacing this should help you to avoid that I like to work with my blouses and bodices while they're open at the side seams it makes attaching sleeves or facings for sleeves easier so here you just watched me under stitch the facing so that way the sleeve facing doesn't roll over to the right side and will remain invisible while worn I also under stitch the neckline and I am doing the view where you do the top stitching on this blouse so you will not have to sew the facing down by hand because we will be top stitching over the neckline as well as the sleeves. Once the under stitching is complete, you wanna move on to closing the side seams. I'm using French seam for this. This is my favorite seam finishing and I will be sewing wrong sides together press and trim the seam allowance then sew right sides together i will leave a card above to four easy seam finishes where i go into detail on how to do the french seam and other really simple seam finishes that i use often here i am showing you how i do my top stitching i use my seam guide for this and i basically measure out the amount and i screw the guide in place so that way all i have to do is follow the guide and my top stitching will stay straight if you do not have a seam guide you can always use chalk or water soluble pen or marker so that way you can just follow the line and then remove the marking when you are done i didn't read far enough ahead on the instructions before I started sewing up the peplum. So I did a French seam for the peplum when I really should have just done it a regular seam because it is lined. So I did an extra step for no reason, but here I am attaching the peplum to the main bodice. Once that is sewn on, I sew on all of my buttons and the hook and eye at the waistline and we are pretty much done. The only thing left to do now is to put a buttonhole on the waistband and hem the skirt, which I did do by hand. Then I made the belt offline because it seemed simple enough and I was afraid that I wasn't gonna finish this project in time. So I basically interfaced the belt with the same interfacing that I used for the peplum. It's a medium weight feasible interfacing. And then I sewed on a hook and bar and it was complete. Before I give you the grand reveal, I wanted to just show you how there's still a tiny bit of volume in these soft pleats because when I did cut the crinoline out, I didn't get to get all of it out from here. So there's crinoline from here to here. And so it's helping maintain the volume in these pleats right here. And so ultimately it did help out and then having a more stiff, like partial lining out of the taffeta because I left the taffeta in there. It's also helping maintain a little bit of its shape. So um, I just wanted to give that update really quickly just in case you wanted to know if there was any kind of benefits um, to 
removing the taffeta after the fact or like the added benefit that I did not anticipate. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and do not forget to subscribe. You can click the bell icon to stay notified whenever I post. You can follow me on Instagram at Serena underscore. And if you'd like to support this channel more, you can leave me a virtual tip on Ko-Fi. The link will be in the description below. I got a few requests for more footage of me wearing my garments, so I decided to pop in a ton of clips that didn't make it into my reels and shorts, so I hope you enjoy it. Um, this is a little bit silly, but I wasn't quite sure how to show off my outfits even more, so enjoy! And I look forward to seeing you in the very next video. Thank you so much for being here again. Bye!